morning. Good morning from Melbourne, Australia. Good evening to friends. Sorry, good evening to friends in North America. And hello to anyone watching on replay. Just fix the volume issue on my laptop there. Um, I'm Nancy Hetker. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Melbourne, Australia. And today I am going to be playing around with a couple of things from our new mini catalog. If you're in Australia and you don't yet have a hard copy of this catalog, I would be happy to send one to you if you're not already working with a demonstrator. Um, inside here on pages 18 and 19, there are a couple of couple of products that I wanted to talk about. Um, I do not have this Adoring Hearts bundle up here, um, but I do have this Thoughtful Moments hybrid embossing folder, um, which is a set of sentiments with a die that cuts them out. So the hybrid embossing folders are 3D embossing folders that have a die that hooks onto the side that has the Stampin' Up! logo. So that, let me get this out of here, might make it easier. Um, hello Gladys and hello Paula, thanks for saying hello. Please do say hello when you pop on so I can see who's here. So the the dies, just a regular thin die like we have, you can use that independently on your Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine but it also hooks right onto these raised embossing folder sections on the Stampin' Up! logo side. You can see it's not moving, it's hooked on there, which is really pretty cool. And then you can put in a piece of cardstock and run it through your Stampin' Cut and Emboss. But, the other thing that is on that page is a new version of a brayer. And we haven't had, well, we haven't had a brayer at all in a couple of years. This is the one that we used to carry. It's by Speedball. It's got a fairly firm, but still squishy, little has a little give to it. Um, it's not totally hard. In fact, you can see, I think if I go like that. Um, roller and it pops out of the handle for cleaning and we had this for many 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 years and then they discontinued it and they brought in a sponge brayer and they worked very differently and people had mixed feelings and what have you well now they they discontinued that a couple years ago and then this year in this catalog have brought in um this one and the roller is made out of silicone and I was all oh you know I still have my speedball one I really liked it it works really well um, Michelle Zindorf who's an American demonstrator who um, is just the brayer queen had all kinds of techniques she came and did a series of workshops in Arizona that I hosted and she signed my brayer and yeah whatever um, but then I started watching some videos of people who have the new version. And as I go, I'll tell you why I think I am going to go ahead and, and shell out the really minor amount of money for a new one. But we'll see how we go with my old one. And you can make your own mind up. Um, so one of the things that I'm going to show, well, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to use the brayer with these sentiments. And then we're going to make a card or two. So one of the things that you can do is before you cut out your sentiment, you can, I'm going to use pool party here. And this glass mat is really nice for brayering that you'll see in a little bit, but I'm going to show you one thing that we can do. Um, the glass mat comes with this silicone craft mat on it. And one of the things I like is that you can put your pads on there. If you just go like that, or if you go like that to ink up your brayer, you're only gonna get part of it. See that? 
So what you want to be sure you're doing with whatever style of brayer you've got is go across it a lot. When in Michelle's um, workshops, and, and I think this was before we had these foam pads, we used to say 20 times. I'm not sure you need to go 20 times at this point, but you can see if I turn this here, it's now pretty evenly coated, which is what you want. And what I'm gonna do is just lightly run that across the raised parts of this embossing folder. And oh, if you have the speedball one, one of the things you should do is always put it down like that. Um, not just because it keeps your surface from getting dirty, but because if you if you store it on the that kind of compressible roller, you're going to get a flat spot on your roller, and you don't want that. So I'm just going to close this up because you know me, I don't like open ink pads. And I'm going to bring in my piece. Oh, no, I'm going to put my die on there. Okay, and it's hooked on. Now I'm going to put my piece of paper on there. And close that up. And I'm going to do this off screen for this one just because it's a lot of moving back and forth. And I'm putting it in my stamp and cut and emboss with just the base plate and then the gray plate on top. And it's really snug because you've got the embossing folder, the cardstock, and that die in there. So it's more snug than normal, which means it makes a big thump. But there we go. And you can see when I show you this side, there is ink on some of the cardstock. There's ink on the die. That's fine. These water-based inks, they come right off everything, as you will see momentarily. So there's that. And here are the sentiments perfectly cut out, and they are outlined. And I think they are quite cool like that. Come here. There's a couple more. So there we go. There are those. Now a six by six inch piece of cardstock fits in there perfectly. Um, I rarely use our 12 by 12 cardstock, but I think that's a good use for it because you just, you get a perfect square and you don't have a lot of waste. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple things for cleaning. You can use your regular chamois, you can use a damp microfiber cloth or rag or baby wipes or whatever you want. but. Um, this is the cleaning cloth that comes with the glass mat. And just a reminder, if you don't remember, if you join Stampin' Up! during January or February, one of your options for your bonus is to get this lovely glass mat that comes with this cleaning cloth and this silicone craft mat. And it is lovely to use with the brayer. I have to say, it's really, really smooth. It's easy to wipe clean. It's, it's really nice. Okay, so now that's all clean and ready to go again. Both of these are, okay? And, oh, I will show you how to clean the brayer as well. Um, again, baby wipes, damp cloth, cleaning mat, there we go, and I can show you, oops, sorry, and then if you want to just be sure, you can just roll it on your piece of grid paper, now it's clean and dry, and there we go. Um, Oh, so yeah, let's take a quick
quick look at these. Yeah, so it's under... Ooh. I hope this is still going for you. My computer's telling me it stopped. But I think I'm still going. Hello, Roseanne. Nice to see you. Let me see if it picks back up again here on my feed. Yes. Okay. Sorry, guys. Love Facebook. Um, so it just has that thin outline from where the embossing folder was inked. And I love it. I think they are great. Just like that. This one I ripped a little bit. So we'll just get rid of that. Um, and I'm going to set those aside. So those were done with pool party. So what am I going to do next? Ah, yes, I know. So the other thing that I wanted to try was, um, same deal with hooking this on. There we go. Now it's hooked on. This is a square of pool party cardstock. And I'll give you an idea of what I mean about how it is really tight in here. You get to see it this time. Be sure you are always putting your, um, your embossing folders, whatever kind it is, in with the hinge side first if you can. Sometimes you're doing something and the paper sticks out and you have to go the other way, but really um, hinge first is gonna put the least stress on that hinge. Okay, so I'm cranking. There we go, not so bad. I've done it several times now, so maybe I've <laughs> loosened up my stamp and put in a boss machine <laughs> enough. So that goes through. Let me get that off to the side. And again, pull these out. And I see. So. I like it in the colored cardstock, but it's really hard to read the letters. So I'm going to show you another way. We're going to do a couple versions of this here, or a couple of them in a couple different colors, I think. So I'm going to bring the pool party back in, and I'm going to ink up my now, because I'm using the pool part, I didn't have to clean it last time, but I wanted to show you. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly, lightly, lightly ink over those words. And you want to do it lightly because otherwise you'll get it down into the negative space there. You just want it on the raised, and it's can be a very delicate thing. And this is where I think maybe having the new brayer might make it easier because it doesn't it, because it's hard. It doesn't compress down in there. So that is with pool party on pool party, and I'm going to just clean up my mat. This one's dry, so I'm just drying it a little bit. And knock stuff onto the floor. And I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna try it now with Lost Lagoon. So Lost Lagoon, Pool Party, Pretty Peacock, they're all kind of show you here. They, they kind of create a family. Getting deeper tones. So this time I'm going to stick some Lost Lagoon. We're 
we're going to try that. And because it's the same, really the same color family, I probably don't need to clean this. I'm just going to do it lightly here just to get the majority of the pool party ink off. And then, and that's pretty well coated. I'm going to bring in the hello. And I'm also going to be able to see your comments here. Okay, it's all still going, that's great. So I'm really lightly, ooh, look at that. It's like just barely touching, oh yeah. Nice, nice, nice. I'm gonna set that one aside. I'm gonna add a little more ink. Let's try to celebrate. Yep, I might not have to buy the new brayer. You should definitely have the brayer, which, whichever one you decide, you know, if you have the speedball one, it seems to be working fine. I'm gonna keep looking at the videos and see if there's something that makes me think that really having the harder silicone one is ultimately the best. Really lightly. And I will do one, I'm gonna do one a little harder so you can see, let's see if I can pick up some of the ink from here. Yeah, that doesn't work so well. So I'm gonna do it harder now so you can see what I mean about, yeah. See that, it, it got everything. Not what we wanted. Just really, really, lightly okay fun as that is we'll stop there and get some cleaning and just wipe my hand in it I don't usually recommend having big tubs of water in your craft space, but I do have a bucket of water here to rinse this out. So I don't have to chuck down the hall while I'm on the video with you guys to the bathroom to rinse it out. Turn my hand off a bit. Look at that, it all just rinsed right out there. And it's clean and dry-ish. We'll set that aside. And I'm gonna close up my ink pad. Now I could bring in my, my um, pretty peacock. Well, sure, why not? Let's do one more round and see how the pretty peacock looks. Because it's so fun. You notice I am going a couple different directions on these. That's, ah, yep. That one's really susceptible to getting stuff down in the negative space there. But the color's pretty. I think Lost Lagoon is my favorite. Okay, another round of cleaning. But do you see how easily that cleans up and how nice and smooth that surface is? Love it. So if you're a demonstrator and you didn't get one of these during the pre-order period, keep your eyes out for when they supposedly might become available to demonstrators, maybe to customers too, in March. I'm hoping that they go ahead and add this. It's such a nice product. They should just go ahead and add it to the annual catalog. And maybe they have. 
we'll know in March. Okay, set that aside again. Now, should we make a card? I think so. Dry off my surface a little bit. There we go. Lovely. So, I actually have a plan. This is some of the um, softly stippled designer series paper. It is a free celebration item in January and February. And I'm going to use another new set of dies. These are the Thoughtful Expressions dies. And they are bundled with this Thoughtful Expressions stamp set. Really pretty. I got this. My Nick is very into hummingbirds, so that just sealed the deal, but I loved these label dies. And so I grabbed it, and I am going to use this die, the largest of these nested labels. And what I'm going to do first, this is cut to go right on to my first layer of pool party. This is second layer size. And I am going to get my glue going. And I don't usually do so much glue in the middle, but because of what we're going to do here, that's important today. Get that centered on there. Now, what I'm gonna do, and I will do this off camera, because again, we don't need to pull that in, but I'm gonna cut that out of the center there. So, hang tight, I will be right back with that. Always a challenge. Get it centered and straight and not have it move when I put the top plate on. So I'll show you how I got it to stay. I've got little bits of post-it note tape. well-loved, used several many times, so it's just sticky enough to hold in place and not so sticky that it rips up my cardstock. So there we go. I'm gonna set that aside for a minute. And white card base. That goes on there. Now this, I will admit, I have lifted wholesale from another Australian demonstrator, Linda Dalkey. Except she did hers on white and I'm doing mine on pool party, the um, sentiment. But she also, I think I'm gonna, let's see here. She did a little bit of blending back behind there with some pool party when she did it on white to make it stand out. I don't sure that I need that because it's, well, so let's look. If it were with this one, okay, let's do it that way. I'm gonna add in some pool party blending back behind here to do with my white one. You can 
test it here and see. Oh, that's splotchy, but that'll get covered. There we go. There we go. I wish that wasn't splotchy, but... What do you think? I think maybe a little darker. Just a little bit. Let's see about... Yep, I like it with the blended background and the white one with the outline. And I'm also thinking what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in a little wink of Stella. Let's see about. Let's see, I don't have any going in here. I just use this in my class and it, ah, there we go say it might be kind of might be time to get a new one and I'm just going over that embossed part of the letters to add a little bit of sparkle it's gonna be really subtle I think Yes, let's see about whether this one, I've got several of these pens, some uh, may have more liquid left in them. Okay, we'll give that a try. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this one down. And because this one's going to go flat and it's got that, we're going to go do an inner layer too. There we go. bring in some mini dimensionals And so this is another celebration item. It is pool party crinkle ribbon. And I was playing with it to see if it would make a nice little bow. And I think I do like that. So I'm going to snipping off here and adding that on
and I often use glue dots, but when it's big like this, I actually have found tear and tape has been working really well. go and I think some embellishments are in order so these glossy dots are still current these are fine sparkle adhesive back gems these are actually retired and I think they're a little bit lighter than I want. I like this slightly darker. And as always I struggle with exactly what I want to do. maybe that. What do you think? So there's that one and if you want to stick with me I actually have a second card in mind. So there's one and it's hard to see the sparkle on there. I may have to go back over it a couple more times to get it a little more showing but um there's that piece that i cut out of the center there you remember um here is another layer this is also from the softly stippled it's the back of that one and it's also pool party it's like a woven linen fabric picture of woven linen fabric in pool party and again i'm going to layer it up on some pool party. Yes, I agree, Roseanne. The crinkle ribbon looks good with just a knot. Um, but I was curious. Somebody had said, oh, it's too thick to, to make into a bow. But I, I really like that bow, personally. So here's another basic white thick card base for that to go on. There we go. And that is going to go in the center there. was thinking that would be good on it. And I also have from, also from the Thoughtful Expressions, this is one set of dies. I put it on two magnetic sheets because it's too many dies to go even on my larger size magnetic sheet. So I, I separated out between the labels and the images. So I cut out several of these leaf sprigs from, um, this is the, oh, what is this called? Three color glimmer paper was in the mini catalog, the, this, the, um, the mini catalog that ended in 
December. I'm not sure if it has carried over or not. That It'll be on my supply list if it carried over, and if not, sorry. But it's got uh, Highland Heather Petal Pink and Pretty Peacock Glimmer Paper. If it didn't carry over, there is also this Pretty Peacock Soft Shimmer Specialty Paper that that is in the annual catalog and that's got Berry Burst, Bubble Bath, Lost Lagoon, Night of Navy, and Pretty Peacock. I decided to use some of the super sparkly glimmer paper and cut some of these to go on the back there. Yeah. And I did put adhesive sheet behind them. I don't think they have to be symmetrical, so I'm not making it symmetrical. I think something like that-ish. So I think what I'm going to do is put this up on dimensionals. I'm going to pop that up on dimensionals too because it's so exposed. Let's see here. some pieces that will go on the H easily. I think this hello is particularly pretty. Okay. And a reminder, if you're having trouble getting your dimensional backs release, if you just press a nail into the center of your dimensional, it'll lift up the edges. Just enough it's easy to get your fingernail under there. And let's see how these go. So I put adhesive sheet on the back of these. They do not come with adhesive. If you wanted to pop them up, I would not put adhesive sheet on them. But 
love adhesive sheet. By only having the two dimensionals there, I have lots of space to slide under. I don't have to worry about it at all. There, I like that it's not matchy-matchy. Usually I'm all into the symmetrical. And I think on this one, I'm gonna bring in these adhesive back sequin trio. It's got these pretty top Sequins. I'm just hemming and hawing again. why I usually just lay them down and don't press. I'm actually going to try the white ones. Another idea. Hang on. Come here. It's the other nice thing about the glass. You can stick stuff on. It's not going to stay forever. Where is Oh, no, you're in here. There we go. This is my Lost Lagoon. Let's go with the dark. Yep, yep, yep. Love that I can color my own. I like that a lot.
So it used to be three on everything. And now it's moving more towards a few, a few more, still supposedly always Always an odd number. Sorry, I'm looking and deciding and analyzing at the same time. And I'm looking in the camera because it's often easier to see things. What do you think? Leave well enough alone now? Yep, I think so. Okay, well, that's what I have planned for you guys today. I hope I've inspired you to pull out a brayer and play. I will be showing you other brayering techniques, I'm sure, as we go along. These are the two cards I made today. I don't have a favorite. I like them both. I hope you like them, and I will be back same time, same place next week. All the details of these will be on my next blog post, so thanks for joining me, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.